Last weekend, the skies put on a spectacular show as auroras danced around in many parts of the world. This uncommon occurrence stemmed from an exceedingly rare and intense solar disturbance or geomagnetic storm impacting Earth for the first time in two decades. According to NASA, the sun in our solar system is undergoing terrifying changes, and this is the reason for the strange solar storm. What's concerning is, the extreme solar activity is expected to continue at high to very high levels in the upcoming days. Scientists have issued a grave warning, suggesting that the ongoing changes in our sun may wield catastrophic consequences for our planet. Today, let's examine what's going on with our sun and how the upcoming solar storms will affect Earth. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. On Friday the 10th of May, an extreme geomagnetic storm reached Earth, and warnings were issued earlier for the potential for a severe impact. The solar storm colored the skies across the world, as people witnessed brilliant displays of auroras in the United States, Canada, Europe, and China, and even as far down as Australia and New Zealand. Officials have said the dazzling light shows could continue for several more days. The Aurora Borealis, the phenomenon more commonly known as the Northern Lights, happens because of a molecular collision in the upper levels of Earth's atmosphere that causes bursts of energy to be released in the form of visible light. The Aurora Borealis has a counterpart, the Aurora Australis, or Southern Lights, which is the same phenomenon in the Southern Hemisphere. These light shows can be visible for as much as half the year in certain places near either of the planet's two poles, but it's uncommon to see them in areas that are closer to the equator, which is why the spectacles over North America, Europe, Australia, and other places were such a treat in the last few days. The aurora extends from the poles toward the equator in periods of intense space weather activity, and it has been known in the past to reach as far as the continental US when the activity is particularly extreme. The geomagnetic storm that hit Earth last week was a G5 level storm, the strongest level of geomagnetic storm on a scale from G1 to G5. G1 and G2 storms are typically minor to moderate, which could trigger weak power grid fluctuations and put on a decent show of northern lights. G3 to G5 storms are usually strong, severe, or extreme, and could trigger widespread blackouts and communication issues. But a brilliant and intense display of the northern lights may reach as far south as Florida and Texas. The last G5 geomagnetic storm to hit Earth occurred in October 2003, and it caused power outages in Sweden and damaged transformers in South Africa. But the year 1859 witnessed the most intense geomagnetic storm in recorded history. Known as the Carrington Event, it created strong auroral displays that were reported globally and caused fires in multiple telegraph stations. Fortunately, there are no reports of any significant impact from the recent geomagnetic storm. But SpaceX's Starlink satellite internet service said that service had been degraded and its team was investigating. CEO Elon Musk wrote on the social platform X that its satellites were under a lot of pressure but holding up so far. Geomagnetic storms typically originate from the sun. They are caused by two main phenomena, coronal mass ejections and solar flares. According to NOAA, the recent series of solar events started on May 8, when a large cluster of sunspots produced several moderate to strong solar flares. Solar flares are bursts of radiation known to be the solar system's largest explosive events. Solar flares were observed for the very first time by British astronomers Richard Christopher Carrington and Richard Hodgson during the 1859 Carrington event. The area where the flares are now occurring is 16 times the diameter of Earth and more solar activity is expected. According to Space.com, it measures about 124,000 miles across and is one of the largest and most active sunspots seen. That sunspot is so big that you may be able to see it with your own eyes using solar eclipse glasses. The spot is known as AR3664, and it was responsible for most of the geomagnetic activity observed. NASA reports that flares of this magnitude are very rare. 
There has also been a series of coronal mass ejections, which are explosions of plasma and magnetic fields that come out of the sun's corona, the outermost part of the sun's atmosphere. At least five CMEs were directed toward Earth during this time. NOAA's Space Weather Prediction Center said that extreme solar activity is expected to continue at high to very high levels with additional solar flares expected in the upcoming days, including X-Class flares, which are the most powerful class of solar flares. While eruptions from the sun are not unusual, what is alarming is that the increased activities are significantly higher than the official NASA predictions. Recently, NASA observed that the sun at the center of our solar system is undergoing terrifying changes to its structure, and this is why we are experiencing geomagnetic storms. Scientists have issued a grave warning, suggesting that the ongoing changes in our sun may wield catastrophic consequences for our planet. Just like the storms, seasons, and climate changes that we have on Earth, the sun regularly experiences a cycle of weather. This is marked by periods of high and low activities and every cycle lasts for 11 years. It's the space equivalent of hurricane season, and we're coming into another one. Solar cycles are repetitive yet difficult to predict. A cycle can be as short as 8 years or as long as 14 years and varies dramatically in intensity. The current cycle, Solar Cycle 25, began in December 2019. When the solar cycle is at peak activity, it is called the solar maximum. The solar maximum happens roughly in the middle of each cycle. Researchers predict that the sun may reach the peak of its current activity and bring forth a solar maximum somewhere around 2025. But even after the sun reaches its peak, its wrath will continue to threaten Earth for at least the next five years. The solar cycle is driven by the sun's magnetic field. Every 11 years or so, the sun's magnetic field flips, so north becomes south and south becomes north. Changes in the sun's magnetic field affect the amount of activity on the solar surface. When the sun's magnetic poles flip, the effects ripple through the solar system since the heliosphere extends billions of miles or kilometers beyond Pluto. Planets without a protective magnetosphere such as Venus feel the full impact. In 2006, a small coronal mass ejection from the Sun hit Venus and stripped the planet's atmosphere of vast amounts of oxygen. Now, let's examine how geomagnetic storms caused by solar cycles could affect Earth. During a solar maximum, space weather can pose a risk to communications on Earth, satellites, and even spacewalking astronauts. One spectacular side effect of increased solar activity during the solar cycle is increased opportunities to see auroras, like the ones we observed recently. When the energetic particles from the sun slam into and interact with Earth's upper atmosphere, dazzling light shows illuminate the sky. The color of the aurora depends on what chemicals in Earth's atmosphere the particles hit. Red hues are produced from collisions with nitrogen molecules, and green is produced by oxygen molecules. According to NASA, there are three main ways heightened solar activity can affect Earth. Large solar flares can lead to a radio blackout storm on Earth, whereby electromagnetic energy disrupts the Earth's upper atmosphere. This disruption occurs mainly in the ionosphere, where long-distance communication signals travel and can lead to radio blackouts across the world. The heightened activity in the sun can potentially disrupt the large-scale infrastructure of communication and even cause an internet apocalypse. But NASA has not yet commented on the possibility of an internet outage caused by a solar storm by 2025. Solar radiation storms can also emit fast-moving charged particles, which carry a lot of energy and can endanger astronauts and Earth-orbiting spacecrafts. During these storms, Astronauts on the International Space Station may be asked to seek shelter and all extravehicular activities are paused. Radiation-sensitive systems on satellites are powered down until the radiation storm has passed. Solar storms can cause satellites to fall from orbit, among other problems. In February 2022, SpaceX lost a batch of 40 brand new Starlink satellites after launching them into what forecasters considered to be only a mild solar storm.
One to three days after a solar eruption pointed toward Earth, a giant coronal mass ejection can hit Earth's magnetosphere and induce currents in electrical systems on Earth. Power grids are particularly vulnerable to such surges in energy, which can cause major blackouts. Notable blackouts caused by geomagnetic storms are the 1989 blackout across the entire province of Quebec, Canada, and the 2003 blackout. A severe solar storm can damage the undersea communication cables, leading to interruption of long-distance connectivity. The outages caused by it can last for months, and there could be a devastating economic impact of more than $11 billion in just one day for the U.S. alone. Given the severity of solar storms, it is important to predict and monitor solar cycles so that we are prepared for changes in solar activity. The World Data Center for the Sunspot Index and Long-Term Solar Observations at the Royal Observatory of Belgium monitors and predicts the solar cycle, tracking sunspots and recording the highs and lows of the solar cycle. NASA and NOAA scientists also form a regular solar cycle prediction panel to evaluate solar activity. Understanding the solar cycle and being able to predict when a new cycle will arise is a key part of space weather forecasting. Scientists hope one day to be able to forecast space weather, much like meteorologists do here on Earth. We are interested to hear your thoughts about the recent solar storm. Leave your opinions in the comments section below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.